welcome to this evening's Spotlight Session with Sunny and Ashley Tear. Ashley is actually a spiritual medium clinical hypnotherapist. She is an inspirational speaker and a healer of negative self-beliefs. And uh, there's a lot of people or a lot of us, including myself, that need that sometimes. She also has a qualification in counseling and used the powerful healing modality of the Psyche Sovereign Alchemy, which I'm really going to ask you about in a minute. Um, Ashley has given spiritual addresses around Ireland and ran charity evenings of mediumship. She has connected with students while running meditation classes and taught at a spiritual retreat with international tutors. So hello, Ashley. How are you today? Hi, Thank you so much for the invite. Oh, you are more really than welcome. Really good. And I will say, and there's another, another retreat in the pipeline, so that'll be coming up soon. Well, you must tell us all about that when it's ready, when you're ready to let us know. So first of all, I'd like to just uh, mm -hmm. welcome, welcome not only the existing members of this group, but a lot of you can see that there's a lot more activity that's happening. It's really being charged with a lot of energy and that energy is coming from yourselves. So thank you, everyone. It really means so much to me that you're all contributing. It's amazing. And a very, very big welcome to everyone new. We've had something like about oh, about 100 new members in a very, very short space of time. And so I want to say a very big welcome. This is part of what we do. We do these spotlight sessions. And it is your opportunity as a business owner to actually show the members of this group who you are. We want to know your personality. We want to get to know you. And we want to know about your business as well. So it's not it's not kind of sales pitch. It's just an opportunity for us to know each other. And that's what I hope that you're getting from this. So I want to actually start with asking you, Ashley, where do you come from in the first place with that wonderful accent? I am from beautiful Belfast, Belfast, Ireland. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, I've you know, the biggest question that's on my mind is how did you discover First of all, we'll talk about the media, the, the hypnotherapist side, but how did you discover that you were a spiritual medium in the first place? Okay, so it was around about 28. My grandmother had passed away and we were very, very close. And I didn't have any, to be honest, any kind of spiritual knowledge, ability, inclination, anything like that. So I, I just really went to seek a bit of a bit of comfort. Is it real? Is it not? You know, let, let's give it a word. And um, lo and behold, the lady gave me a, a reading that blew me away. And she said, you could do this. You could you could do this work if you if you want to go and study and train, <clears throat> because there is a lot more to this than what meets the eye. There's a lot of dedication, meditation, classes. There's a college that you go, you know, you can go to. Other people might just have a gift. That's brilliant. But I have to say I had to work a wee bit harder to uncover the layers of me that sort of hindered that gift that was already there. Mm. So that's that's where it started a few years ago. Now I am I'm 35, but um, that's been so, that, that's on the journey. So for you, it's it started quite late, really, because a lot of people mm. that are involved in this sort of arena, they have they have tapped into that gift from children um mm. and maybe yeah. that's been cultivated with them so it was interesting that you discovered it much later in life and it was also interesting what you were saying about the fact that it's not just something i'm guessing that you can switch on and switch off you've had to do a lot of study for it yeah yeah but, well what i would actually say about the switch on switch on i actually can do that now uh. <laughs> funny enough so but i've had to work to a point to cultivate basically the way i would say it is your own personal power and i would actually describe it as creative power mm -hmm. so w w the gifts that it sort of enabled me as time has went on other things have opened up like having the confidence to stand in front of you know audiences virtual addresses give talks do other things like that because you kind of get this flow and this power behind you that, that just makes that aspect easier of, of other friends that have sat and they have now basically started to to go down a path of um spirit art Do you know mm -hmm. after you sit for a certain amount of time a certain amount of hours of meditation a creative switch just sort of comes on so if i'm going to go to a spiritual address it's basically about stepping into your power like I, i'm going to be taking the address 
um, the service at Belfast Virtualist Church this weekend. So when I get up there, I'm going to get up, stand, and it's on. We're good to go. And um, when I come up now, I'm not, when I go up there, I'm not seeing people in the room and this is happening and that's happening. No. And I actually prefer that. I do not want my life impeded by seeing this and hearing that. No. No. I have a life to live as well. So when it's time to work, it's time to work. And when and when it's not, it's not. I can't deny that sometimes there's spillover, but it's quite rare for me. But I I, I like that. I get a of respect from the spirit world. I'm like, well, this is my downtime. And I believe that's the way it should be, actually. So Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. So you can so you can can you actually get the spirits to to come in? And then you'll tell them off if they if they interrupt at the at the wrong times. Is that right? Well, yeah. For me, it doesn't happen often, but I know that there is my friends of mine who will be, oh, I can't sleep. You know, they're waking me up at this time in the morning. No, 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 I don't. It's kind of like, um, what way would you put it? So, if I get up to work, I will feel an essence of that person. I will begin to feel like I am them. And that's the way our sort of relationship goes. And then when I'm finished working, I have no awareness of that at all. You know, so it's kind of, I'll just say, it's, 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 it's about intention. You know, this world that we live in, if people understood how powerful intention is, if you have good intention, if you have intention to help, if, you know, all of those things, or if you have bad intentions, believe me, nobody gets away with anything there is retribution i would say in, in the next world you know, people say people get away with murder no you don't see all this if you have bad intentions people don't get away with anything really truly and if you put it that good to the world that is what you will see back that's my yeah. belief <laughs> yes yeah now i know i know that you um <clears throat> that you have done readings for people and um i know that i asked you recently for a reading but you're not actually taking those bookings at the moment because you're concentrating yeah on the other part of the business which is the hypnotherapy is that right yes clinical hypnotherapy and the the healing modality of the psyche the sovereign alchemy yeah. okay so you've said that i need that explained to me what is psyche sovereign alchemy please yeah 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 so uh, and this it, it may sound fantastical but it is the truth so about a year, year and a half ago, I would say, now I went and, and, and I trained. Um, okay, this is a long story, but I'll shorten it. Had no intentions of learning clinical therapy, but what happened was I won tickets to an event. My brother at the event won, what did he win? He won something else. He won training to, um, he won hypnotherapy and training for a weekend of hypnotherapy. So, well, he I give him a ticket and then he gave me a ticket. So I ended up, we went down and we trained for hypnotherapy. It was too perfect. Then, you know, it was put in my lap. And so from there, I really was absolutely fascinated at the education of how the mind works and how all, you know, people are conditioned, myself included, we all are from a young age. It fascinated me because I also work with children as well. And, you know, I've done a lot of safeguard training. It's kind of like social worker training. And it's very interesting to me to see the ages of the mind and how we grow and all of this. So clinical, clinical hypnotherapy. So I could help somebody with, you know, relationship issues. I can help them with you know, stop smoking, you know, issues. I have to be honest, mine goes more to the emotional side. I find that I get people who have deep emotional wounding. I have worked with people who are suicidal. So mine sort of veers towards... I, forgive me, I find the boring stuff, the weight loss and the smoking, you know, mine's is more hard hitting, you know, uh, all of that kind of stuff, you know, uh, panic attacks and all of this. Mm. But about, about a year, year and a half ago, I was in deep meditation and my guides came to me. Now, it doesn't happen often. I don't ask for things in meditation. If things drop in, that's fine. You know, blocks of thought. And um, I was very clearly shown a hand symbol you know a, a sort of basically what sovereign alchemy is I was given like downloaded and I, kind of like a script so I came out of the meditation and I wrote down step by step mm -hmm. okay and I thought right okay that's really interesting I'm going to give that a word so I started to for free at the time experiment with people implement it see if it worked and to my well surprise and jubilation for want of a better expression it did work because what I had to do, because I came from a long line of, well, well, yeah, trauma, childhood trauma. Oh. So I've had to work a lot on healing, healing myself, and you know, so I can be the best version to help other people. Mm. 
Mm. And I have had work with another lady and she has a healing modality called Psych K and it works on healing negative self-beliefs. Now those negative self-beliefs are the one thing I would say that held me back the most in my life. Mm. So I was sort of given my own, my own, well, not a version of her. It was, you know, my own unique, you know, healing modality. So I says, right, okay, started working with it. And, and then it sort of evolved from there. And that will be, I generally see people for between maybe one, one to three sessions, or I can see them for the one side. It really depends on what their need is. Mm-hmm. If it is just, they would like some sovereign alchemy, or I would work on first session and release forgiveness. I would work on the, the emotional body and, and getting rid of trapped emotions. Mm-hmm. And then the next one would be the sovereign alchemy, negative self-beliefs. And the third one more is a very spiritual process where I will bring people to meet their guides. You know, they will have their own experience. So it's not me telling them, my guide said this or I feel that for you. Mm-hmm. They feel that themselves. And I find that a more empowering way. Otherwise, I do I will be offering the readings again in the future. I'm just very busy at the moment. So, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> that's how it wow. works in a nutshell yes yeah so so when you're working with someone with um those negative self-beliefs and you go through you can go through these stages um how do, how are you sometimes able to get there because i know from work that i've done in the past i've actually i'm a trained um nlp uh practitioner and also in that came the hypnotherapy as well and mm-hmm. sometimes it's it's quite hard it's quite hard to get someone to a point where they can open up and feel comfortable enough to actually even express that. And I, I've also been on um, spiritual journeys where I've been in deep meditation and a lot of that has to, we have to enable that to come out. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty, I'm fairly sort of open to those sorts of things, but I know that sometimes people or we can be guarded and it's almost like we protect it as if it is something that we need to hold on to. So how do you really help them kind of release those? Well, I would say, well, maybe it's just for me in particular. I've been quite lucky. The people that come to see me, they really, really want help. And they're really kind of willing to do anything that it takes to get there. Mm. So they're kind of nearly already there by the time they're sort of speaking to me, which is great. I've actually only really had it with one lady and um, she had very bad, you know, um, panic attacks. Mm-hmm. So I said to her, what I need to do is I need to build, so I suppose it's fair enough that I should explain this. Definitely the first session, I, I'm not going to say it's completely comfortable because it's not. I need to put you, I, I, I need to build and coach you into that emotion. So I would say, um, you know, at, at, you can see yourself um, on a screen and you're feeling you know, um, shortness of breath and you're feeling, you're, you're sweating and your heart's freezing and, you know, and I build them when they're in a lower brainwave frequency, which I, 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 you know, go through processes to get them there, which I check, um, I make sure I check with convincers as I go. When they're in the right brainwave frequency, we will then, I will then coach them into it and I, it is uncomfortable, but it's only uncomfortable for about 30, 40 seconds at best. Mm. And then we'll go back to the memory and we go back there and we reframe. But what I'm actually finding, Sonny, is my particular people, I would say I have a quite, a, uh, quite a lot of open-minded people that I work with. Mm. So where we've been going is actually been fascinating me because it's kind of, we're really just what I would say is working with consciousness. There was a lady I was working with and she had insomnia. And where we went back to was a different realm, a different dimension. I was and going to ask really, about that, whether we, whether you ended up going into yeah. these different realms and different dimensions, because I can imagine that would come up. Yeah. You mm. see, because I have basically, the, the, the training as a clinical therapist as a template, I've changed a lot of it. And, uh, for example, instead of me saying, when is the first time in your life where you have felt the feeling like this when I'm coaching the person? We're going there. So I've changed that to when is the we're, we're going back to the root cause in any lifetime or any space and time where this feeling occurred. We're going back there. So I have to be honest, the majority of the time it is in this life between ages of zero seven. Sometimes it can be past life. Sometimes that one really fascinated me where we went back to a different dimension. And, you know, the lady's guide sort of spoke and spoke through her and told her what the issue was. And we were able to fix that. And she's been able to her insomnia has has cleared and she was getting two hours a night if she was lucky 
over yeah. and you know she was saying I'm not exaggerating over maybe two days I would get three two three hours sleep so she's been able to get a good seven hours a night she says now mm-hmm. which is brilliant so it can be deeper and deeper layered and what I've actually found is as I'm working my guides sometimes will come in and they'll say something else like use this or do this or they will give me stuff it's kind of like very much tailored and intuitive in that moment I'm not very cookie cutter this will work for everybody I have to really tailor the session to suit that person but sometimes it's like well, we're doing it this way and they'll say no no we're going to do it this way mm. yeah, right okay and mm-hmm. it works <laughs> yes yeah so your guide, so your guides really are taking care of you and 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 literally guiding you i mean they're guides but they they're guiding you along the way and allowing you to to try all those different things in order to help that person now what i want to pick up on is one of the things that you said a little while back is about intention now with with the changes we we have to address this that with the changes in the world that have gone on um there's a lot of mm-hmm. mental health issues right now and people are feeling very much different from perhaps the way that they were feeling before the world their their lives have been turned upside down in many cases um they don't know what their direction is their purpose is um you know what even their desires are anymore so are you coming across i mean how are you helping people at the moment because when we talk talk about intention you know, most of us, the majority of us, one would hope is that we have good intention, is that we that we want to be a good person, is that, that we want to brighten someone else's day. But at the moment, there is a lot of anger around. There's an energy of anger that can come out, particularly on social media as well. I mean, for me yeah. personally, I avoid that. I move away. You know, that that's their thing. But and that's the way that I, I deal with that. But but for for individuals that are perhaps involved in say work where they're confronted by very very upset angry people how do you help people how do you help them overcome that and how do you help people stay in good intention so i suppose i would focus there on you know the anger release forgiveness so your subconscious mind whether people realize this or not does not know the difference between what's real and what's not real so if somebody has a lot of anger or a lot of fear you know those are emotions that i can work with very readily you know, the hardest person I would need to work with would be somebody that can't feel anything at all. And I would really need to coach them. So if so, somebody's going to come to me with severe anger, um, anxiety, something like that, I, I can really work with that. But I suppose it's just about the awareness because I'm going to pick up on this, Sonny. I seen, I seen like a quote the other day and I just thought it was perfect. I'm going to make some more videos and things, you know, because I do put a content content uh, about things like this and it said you do not experience the world as it is you experience the world as the way you are okay yeah, yeah. so what i actually pick up on now we're not going into to, to anything but let's just say there was a certain post that you had shared on your timeline and i thought that is amazing i'm going to share that post it's very um i'll put it as thought provoking and um you know, and I got lots of really great feedback on that post. Everybody's really positive. Thank you for sharing this. And wow, that's, you know, that, look at this perspective, you know, really, really intelligent, good stuff. And you came on and you said, you want to see my timeline? Go over and check it out. And it was, oh my goodness, you know, some people were being very personal. And that's all we'll say about that. But that shows me, it shows me more about that person, those particular people they have unhealed issues they have unhealed things it's not about you sonny it's about them and their stuff that Mm. but they're unconscious of it Mm. so that fascinates me that the same post can be shared on somebody else's and get certain feedback and it can be shared on mine and i get certain feedback and Mm. you know it's human nature how conditioned are you how fearful are you all of those things but you know i suppose the only thing i I, if, if i was to help anybody is they need to want the help do you know, I, I will have people contact me and it'll say, be a mother. Can you help my daughter? And I say, that would be great, but I would need to speak to your daughter. Mm-hmm. They need to want the help. I, you know, I'm not going to take somebody's money if I don't believe it's going to work. What you need to come with is an open mind and a willingness to change. Mm-hmm. And unless that's there, I won't, I won't work with somebody. So it just shows you how, where people are coming from, where their perspectives are. It, that That really fascinates me. And it's sort of like, there's a certain person that I know, you know, well, they will remain, they will remain nameless. 
<laughs> and they have a very paranoid view of the world. Mm -hmm. So like literally anything, it could be anything, or oh, my friends are going against me, or this is happening, I'm very, very paranoid. And they will actually say certain things to me like, did you do that on purpose or did you do that? And, and I know I haven't. Yeah. So I know it's not, it's not me. I know it's not the other people. I know it's them. Mm -hmm. And I said, you need to work on this. You need to work on this paranoia that started somewhere. This is your problem. Not It's, it's like a lens, it's like a colored lens of their view of the world. Mm -hmm. And a bit like other people's perspectives, you know, at the end of the day, a bit like yourself, I'm on, I'm on um, social media to build people up, to support people, to put out, you know, the good vibes. There's enough crap going on in the world for want of a better expression. That, you know, I don't want to be part of that. No, so that's right. I go for the, the go for the yeah. opposite. Well, you've got to. I mean, you you need to surround yourself. I, this is a this is a belief of mine. Is you've got to surround yourself with people who have the same intentions as you that that mm -hmm. actually are you know have that intention of being kind of being good of actually trying to help people in whatever way they can and what the, i was actually on um, an interview myself this morning it was really interesting what came up and it was the fact that um you know when when we when we have that intention to be good and to be kind express that you know sometimes what happens is that we hold it within ourselves and we don't express it because we have that fear from somewhere that we're going to be criticized for it but what i would say to anybody that's listening is always express those good intentions because you never ever know who you're going to affect by something simple that you've put up in social media or a simple phone call or a simple few words that you've said to someone you actually never know and i have told this story a few times and i it always fascinates me i used to put up a lot of posts about love um just the concept of love um and it was it was probably at a time when i i was going through a time when i probably didn't feel that loved at you know during that period so i ended up putting lots of it on lots of it on and i guess this was my way of manifesting that that goodness so when i reflect mm -hmm. back on it i can see i can see that now however one day i was sitting in a cafe and someone ran past the cafe this was when i was in australia they ran past they went they went sunny sunny oh my god oh my god it's sunny and i'm sort of thinking oh yeah <laughs> what's this all about she came running in she gave me this huge hug and i and i said oh you know who are you she introduced herself and she said oh i can't believe i've actually met you she said i have been watching all of your posts this last 12 months and they have meant so much to me you have helped me so much you have helped me get through some really difficult times and i wouldn't mm -hmm. be where i am now if it wasn't for your posts not once did she like love or comment i had never seen her so <laughs> so you know i implore people to actually you know do good things do those good deeds it doesn't have to be amazing it, it, it you know it doesn't have to be volunteering mm -hmm. for anything but it could be something as simple as a good post come from the heart with those good intentions and mm -hmm. it makes such a massive difference i mean i'm sure that you find this all the time actually that the conversations that you have with people even though you might not be in in a working phase or hypnotizing them or doing any medium work or being channeled anything like that there are things that you can say to people to just reframe them switch them around mm -hmm. and help them mm -hmm. in that moment in time and i've always had the belief that you never know what's been going on for that person so they might fire a bad comment at you, but you never know what's been going on for that person. And it's not even about their past or a different dimension. It could even be just that moment before you got on the phone call. It could be something stressful that had happened or some bad news mm -hmm. that they got. You just don't know. So, you know, treat people with yeah. kindness and kindness. That's for sure. That's for sure. Um, but Ashley, I want to, I want to know, I want to know what from you personally, what is your personal dream for, for yourself, for the greater good? What is your dream? So um, I am switching and moving, you know, I've done courses, I've done video content. I'm going to do, you know, more of that kind of stuff. I have a spiritual retreat coming up. We're going to view the premises this Saturday, you know, for, with another two amazing um, mediums and healers. So we're going to be offering a wonderful variety there. But I'm very much now moving into more teaching mode. You know, I will still see my clients, but 
um, I feel like the message, you know, the, the stuff that I get that I'm guided with, I want to put out just more of that. Basically, my, my ultimate intention is about just helping people. It is plain and simple. And whatever way I can do, maximize that. You know, so obviously I work with people one on one individually, individually. But, you know, I am, and as corny as this may sound, I absolutely love to see people do well. I, mm. I absolutely love it. I champion people. Mm. That actually makes me really naturally happy. It's just something that's always been there. So I, I'm, I'm, you know, moving sort of into that kind of flow. But all I would say is, you know, even anybody, you don't have to come for a session. You don't have to, you know, be a psychic medium. But what I would definitely sort of advocate for is meditation. Because, you know, after a while, life sort of, you know, I've said this before, but life sort of begins to become a dance. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is I was at Belfast versus Church on Sunday there. And I was thinking to myself, oh, you know, last week, what am I gonna what am I gonna do with my address, my inspirational talk about? Give, come on, spirit, inspire me. What am I gonna I have lots of things I could speak about, but which one? Mm-hmm. And um that was okay. So I went to Belfast Spirit this church and and I, I had thought in my mind, I I'm, I'm I'll probably pick me. Oh, hold on, Ashley, your sound is gone. That's it. Sorry, it was a phone call. <laughs> There's a wonderful poem. Um, I wandered lonely as a cloud, and you know it's about nature. So I was at Belfast Spiritualist Church, and the, the lady, the medium, um, she got up and she gave the address, which was amazing. And I got a message, and she actually said, "Oh, I'm, I'm seeing somebody that sort of is looking down from heights. I'm seeing somebody that you know has been up." Sound is gonna get Ashley. <laughs> Sorry, they're phoning again. Um, so <laughs> stop phoning Ashley Spirits, please. Phoning, Just a stop minute. <laughs> yeah. I'm busy, I'm busy. And uh, she sort of started off the link. Now I knew it was for me. I'm the friend beside me, Kashina. She says, that's for you. So it's not a spirit of heights. She started off like this. Now I've recently done uh, a skydive for charity. We raised £10,000. It was great. And I loved it. I, I, it didn't scare me. So the medium says, you know, you know, you're up high and you're, you're not a spirit of heights. And she told me everything. She says, um, spirit, where you, you find a place in nature that you really connect with. And I was like, yeah. Do you speak to the, the divine from there? And I says, yeah. She says, um, and you, there's going to be something about you doing a talk and a talk about um, a nature. And I just went, wow. So the message I got, I asked spirit, what will I speak about next week? And I got it was to do with nature. And it was perfect. She told me other things I can't even remember now, but it was amazing and very accurate. But for me, my life is sort of, that, you know, goes to the flows of, of synchronicity. And where I need to go, I know I'm very guided to do so. So yeah. it's amazing. Excellent. Yeah. So, okay. So how do people get in touch with you? Um, and so so are you are you offering places on the retreat at the moment? Are you open to taking bookings? Um, is that... Well, we, we're... We're getting the last bit strapped up. We're going to, you know, go down and make sure the premises is right and how many rooms, you know, we're sort of like finer details, but that's very much, I'd say in the next, within the month, we will, we will have something sorted out there that we can share. Excellent. So in the meantime, how would people get in touch with you perhaps to, to give you an expression of interest? Yeah, just, I see, well, I see to your psychic medium, they can go on and follow me. I have to be honest, I don't really take many friend requests, but you go, you can go on and follow me there because there's just too many fake profiles and I do not have time for it. I'm very busy. So you can go on and follow me on Facebook, but all my flyers and different bits will be on there. I see tier, spurt, uh, sorry, I see tier clinical therapy or I see tier therapy. I need to get right. And also I see tier psychic medium, but I'm not taking readings just yet. They're, they're, they're in the pipeline that there, there will be time allocated out for that. And, you know, I have a YouTube channel, The Sovereign Spirit. You can go on there just for inspiration, philosophy, um, my th- thoughts and views on all things spiritual. Oh, that would be wonderful. Well, I'll tell you what I would like is once we finish this recording and when you've got a moment um, in the next few days, put up your links underneath the recording because then they're all in one place. And also today yes. I put up the ability for people to put their YouTube channel up on the group 
um, if you have a look at that, oh. you can put your YouTube channel there as well, um, you know, because this this mm -hmm. group is about sharing and it's actually enabling us to to all start working together and collaborating. And I know just even in the past week um, through these spotlight interviews that people have actually started to connect and work together, which is wonderful. And I can, I can actually highly recommend going to have a look at the YouTube channel. It's really interesting. And you've got some great you've got some great um, videos oh, there. Yeah, really good. So, so I want to just um, finish off by saying thank you everyone that came on live. I did see a few of you there. Um, hi, Rhiannon and Shelley. I definitely can see you there. There's a few others. Um, those of you that are on the replay, just put in that you're on the replay as well. That would be lovely. I will be putting this on my YouTube channel as well, and I'll share this with you also, Ashley, when I've done it. So I'd just like to finish off by saying anybody else that wants a spotlight session, just get in touch with me on Messenger. That's the easiest way. And finally, just to say thank you so much, Ashley. It's been a real ple pleasure. Um, you and I haven't known each other that long, but it was a lovely connection when we first met and it's just developed mm -hmm. into a lovely relationship. And I really thank you very much. You're so welcome. I feel absolutely the same way. And although we might not see eye on, on, on absolutely everything, but we have not enough respect and emotional intelligence to connect on every other level so it's and that's hard should be so yeah thank you most for the definitely end. most definitely all right you take care and thanks for thanks again thanks so much sunny bye, bye everyone bye, bye everyone